Hello friends, welcome to the 5 of the 10 days of prayer and happy new week also. Um, now, this is the point where if you've been following religiously from the one, this is where we start being tired. And this is where we start finding excuses, you know, not to continue. But I just want to say, I've read through the five remaining days and it's so powerful. You don't want to miss it. So please, if you are planning to find excuses not to listen anymore, just continue because it gets better from here on out. Yes, it definitely gets better from here. Um, welcome again. And we are still praying for you as we go through these 10 days of prayer. We're definitely fasting and that the Lord is our strength as we carry on. I want to say thanks to our friends who uh, had just come across our videos and um, are expressing their thanks and gratitude for what we're doing. It's a great honor that we can be able to sit here and also to share our faith with you in this process as we go on. Today, day five, we are talking about a very interesting topic. And as we are praying, our topic today is captioned, focusing on the things that matters in our prayers. Focusing on the things that matter in our prayers. And our member text, our scripture text is from Matthew chapter six, verse nine to 10. Matthew six, verse nine to 10. And it says, pray then this, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven it's a normal phrase it's a common phrase that we usually hear um day in and day out probably when we're growing up probably on a, a school devotion line we say these prayers even uh, with our families we say these prayers the lord's prayer our father who art in heaven hello be thy name that cannot come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven you know we we can even say it off head but do we actually know what these things mean when we say them? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We just want to stop there and give you a gist about this prayer, what it really, really means. I'll just give you an intro of uh, of this text, the background of it, where, where where actually it came from or how Jesus started to, to say this prayer. Probably some of us don't know. This is a prayer, Jesus, this is something Jesus was trying to teach to his disciples. Um, in Matthew chapter 6, is considered as the Sermon on the Mount, beginning from verse uh, chapter 5 with the Beatitudes. Jesus is on the mountain and he's preaching to a multitude of people. He's teaching them not only prayers, but he's teaching them the way of life. Jesus um, um, have this uh, great opportunity to speak to a lot of people. He was moving from one place to another, from one town, one city to another. And here's an opportunity that he had with thousands of people. He begins to teach them uh, uh, things of the kingdom of the kingdom of God and 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 even how to prioritize our walk with him Jesus is teaching us how to pray he begins by saying our father who art in heaven most often we begin praying with requests heavenly father you know I'm sick heavenly father the first thing you begin with to God is burden I'll give you an example quickly um, I'm just saying, hey, hi, how you doing? And the first thing you reply to me is, in Isaiah, like seriously? Jesus is saying the same thing here to us. When we, when, when we pray, this is how we pray. He's teaching his disciples how to pray. The first thing we say, our Father, hallowed be your name. We reverence God. We, we reverence his sovereignty, his holiness as God. Heavenly Father, you are so wonderful. Let's begin with that by praising God and, and thanking God and, 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 and um, appreciating him for life. I will come back on this verse, but before that, let's just look a little bit um, in the Bible. Uh, there have been many, many men and women in the Bible who have been strong prayer warriors. But there is one person in particular that we don't really consider him as a prayer warrior, but mm. I think he is. And I'm going to prove that to you. All right. It's King David. 
we know David for being a kid, uh, the second king of, of Israel. We know him for being like the best king that Israel has ever had. We know him for his adultery. Mm -hmm. We know him for his murder. And we know him that it's from his seed or from his generation that Jesus came. But guess what? I strongly believe that one of the reasons why God said David is a man after my own heart was because he knew how to pray to God. And the example comes from um, this passage that we all know very well and we all just cite off here, the same way we cite our, our Father. Our father. The, that chapter is uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the thing is because we are still, again, focused on our wants and our needs, mm -hmm. we only say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, and that's it, we stop there. But actually when we look, when you take your time to objectively look at Psalm 23, we see that David is actually talking more about how dependable and how great God is to him than whatever God can do for him. Mm. He says in the beginning, the Lord is my shepherd. A shepherd is someone who guides the sheep. Yeah. We, don't, we don't really know the life of shepherds right now, but uh, in countries where you, you, you know there's so much flock and you have shepherd, being a shepherd is a very hard work because sheep are stupid animals. Mm. They don't know their right from their left. They don't really know much. Mm. So the shepherd is the one who is like a parent with a baby. That's literally that. You are the one who is caring for the, the sheep. You are the one who knows, you know, uh, the places to go to find right food. Mm. You are the one that even helps the sheep to, like, whenever um, mosquitoes and gnats and flies come around, yeah. you are the one who, are, who is responsible for removing all those things. So the shepherd is someone who takes 24-7 great care of the sheep. Mm. And David is saying that God is his shepherd. And then he continues, when, when you he, he just says, uh, he leads me, he makes me lie down, he leads me, he restores my soul, he leads me in past righteousness. Though I walk, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff to comfort me. You prepare a table, you anoint. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. If you read through the whole thing, is God. You do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. It's not God, I want this, I want this. He's acknowledging this. God. He is acknowledging God. He is reverencing God. Um, there is someone who wrote a book, Philip Keller. He wrote a book called A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23. And he said that Psalm 23 actually depicts or desc describes um, the sheep and the shepherd's journey throughout the whole year mm. when they go out of you know the, their comfort place to look for um, pasture and they come back so that whole journey for the whole year that's what david is describing here and throughout all of that he as a sheep mm. having seen how god takes care of him he's saying you do all these things to me and he writes this prayer to kind of acknowledge god so in our prayers we need to take our time to also acknowledge god now we just read our um bible text and i just want to bring one or two points from there okay. as Pip has already said that we need to reference god hallowed be your name, His name. But the first statement is our Father in heaven. I don't know how it, I don't know if it clicks. The fact that we as human beings, mm. sinful as we are, mm. we have the opportunity to call God our, our Father. Father. When we say God our Father, we are saying that we are not alone. Mm. We are seeing that there is someone who cares for us. For those of us who probably grew up without the father we know how it that that hole that is deep in our heart mm. how we yearn to have someone like like a father figure to love us and guide us and now we all of us have the opportunity to, to call, call god, god our, our father, father. Mm. now those of us who have had a father or who have fathers we know how good it is how how our fathers influence us and how when we want something we can rely on our father to give us definitely and the father we can call God our father so in as much as this um, verse in the beginning still telling us to acknowledge God 
in the very beginning it's giving us comfort in knowing that God is our father so we are not alone and we can rely on him take talking about the father figure stuff once you have a father you don't worry about food you don't worry about clothes because you know Christmas day or whatever time comes your father will provide so you don't worry about things so when when you're having a conversation with your father probably maybe your father or your father is having a conversation with you is about um upbringing school you know how to be a good child important in the house things. important things yeah. that's what you talk about with your father you don't just oh baba oh. you know it's like listening things they are first thing you start to talk to you no 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 because you, these things you don't you don't think about food you don't think about clothes because you know your father will definitely provide so exactly you spot on so focusing on things that matter in our prayers the point is that once we acknowledge that god is our father those small 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 things he's going to provide uh, them for us the most important thing is that we need to find we need to focus in our prayers mm. on conversing with him to deepen our relationship with him exactly. don't get me wrong i'm not saying we should not tell god what we want mm -mm. we should but that should not be the focus of our prayers if you are praying for 30 minutes tell god what you want in 10 minutes and the 20 minutes remaining just use praise it god to praise him thank him and tell him i want to listen to you As we conclude our time of prayer today, my dear friends, let's reflect on the priorities of our faith highlighted in Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 10. By centering our prayers on God's kingdom and his will, we align ourselves with the divine purpose for our lives. May our prayers not only be a list of requests, but a profound conversation that deepens our relationship with our heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this. We didn't have the time to go into the meat of the whole thing, but we thank you for reminding us that because you are our Father, our needs are already settled, and we just need to focus on our relationship with you. Heavenly Father, help us to let the, let the greed and the selfishness be removed from our heart. Remove it. So that we don't focus much on what we need, but let's focus on our quality time with you that we have through prayer. Thank you, Lord.